Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. Good evening once again to all of you. We studied justification by faith for several weeks. And I reminded you that it is the most important doctrine in New Testament era. In every era, but in New Testament era, it assumes particular significance because New Testament era is a period when uh, the church was going to be enslaved by human institutions. During Jewish era, the church had a hierarchy. I, I'm talking about Jews. The Jews had a hierarchy, but the hierarchy was appointed by God according to certain norms and standards. And what is more, anybody in that hierarchy who dared to break divine principles was punished severely very severely i mentioned the, the incident of levi uh, incident of eli and how lord said listen since your sons are immoral and you do not stop them i am going to do something that will tingle the ears of god's people you may say well he did ask his children why they are doing it Please remember, asking your child why you are doing it is different from stop doing this, this instant. There's a vast difference. Also, the Pentateuch, the first five books which God gave through Moses, it had ample provision to discipline even adult children who were not listening to their father. What is more, if any Jewish, any Jew was immoral, and we hear about uh, uh, the children of Eli that they were terribly immoral. They were lying with all the women who were serving at the door of the tabernacle. And the Old Testament had very clear and stringent provision to handle such people. And Eli, as the high priest had the responsibility to handle his children so he did not use the old testament law he did not use his parental authority just a week why do you do this but still ultimately the hierarchy among jews was made by god and god had direct rule over the people of god and also if somebody was running in error, God used to punish them directly. That was a different era. When the New Testament era came, God decided to give more freedom to people. Also, God abolished hierarchy. There were no longer Levites. There were, there were going to be no more Levites. There would no longer be priests there would no longer be high priests and there would no longer be judges. Rather, in the New Testament era, God would make each believer a priest. And the role of high priest would be taken by Lord Jesus himself. A totally new era. And there would be absolutely no hierarchy. Every church was going to be autonomous which is practiced by us, the brethren. But God knew well that where there is no hierarchy, man 
creates his own authority structures not only does man create his authority structures man would try to control everybody and suppress everyone who doesn't agree with him as i speak to you what is happening in afghanistan is a very good example of what happens to a group of people where there is no well defined hierarchy those who who can usurp power they usurp and then they suppress everybody in malayalam there is a saying kayyu kollavan karyakaran in hindi the same thing is said as jiski laathi uski bhains what it what these sayings mean is anybody who has muscle power he will rule so new testament was going to be a period when god made every church autonomous every believer a priest and god very clearly knew that new testament will be a period when because of this freedom and autonomy some will definitely use their muscle power to control and manipulate people and when they control and manipulate people the first doctrine they are going to suppress is the doctrine of justification by faith that is the significance of just justification by faith in the new testament era since god knew these things in advance he is omniscient god he made this doctrine far more clear in the new testament than in the old testament in the old testament statements like abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness such statements are given the last one third of the book of isaiah talks a lot about salvation through lord jesus but a clear statement like being justified by faith that was given during new testament era and much 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 elaboration of that doctrine was given during new testament era so that even if any warlord uh, i'll be using that word again and again a warlord is a dictator who uses muscle power to control any kind of human society uh, the people who rule afghanistan they are generally known as warlords because there are many so when a warlord tries to control the church or when warlords try to control the church the first thing they would do is to suppress the doctrine of justification by faith and therefore god found it necessary to state that doctrine in, in as clear terms as possible so that even if this doctrine is suppressed by people suppressed by warlords still people should be able to read the bible and understand that doctrine that's the reason why the doctrine of justification by faith is given in elaborate detail in romans and also much of it is rephrased and mentioned in another context in the epistle to galatians linked to the doctrine of justification is the doctrine we are going to study today and that is sanctification but studying sanctification without the doctrine of justification is slavery and that is the reason why in many of these dictatorial churches which are the dictatorial churches any church where warlords rule they are dictatorial churches in dictatorial churches they talk about sanctification but not about justification because justification brings freedom and talking of sanctification without talking of justification brings slavery and that is the precise reason why you are getting sanctification after i taught you justification a lot can be done in the name of sanctification a lot of oppression can be done 
that's why justification should come first and sanctification should come after that question is what exactly is the meaning of sanctification we will take it step by step let us begin with a little bit of background philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 philippians 3 13 i am going to read it to you from new american standard bible because uh, nasb translates it very well please remember no translation of the bible is 100 percent perfect it is not possible for humans to attain perfection and therefore serious bible students should develop the habit of reading and studying from multiple translations as many as possible many many people say oh well it's so a lot of confusion this translation says this that translation says that that is a lot of idiocy it's a lot of idiotic talk there is no translation which contradicts any other translations if somebody claims that oh they all say different things you can understand and you ought to understand that they are escapists who don't want to read any translation at all now you may say well how did this subject come in between sanctification it came in between sanctification because this is a bible school program and in a bible school program you have to uh, i would be presenting not only the core subject but also essential side subjects let me tell you one thing multiple translations help us greatly to understand the bible clearly and therefore we should develop the habit of having multiple translations let me give you an example you can see a black book here at my back this is the entire bible in 26 translations the more that we consult the more is the clarity on the passage not contradiction those people who talk of contradiction they are lazy bums who don't want to study the bible and therefore talk of such lame excuses okay this translation i'm picking up from new american standard bible and it says brothers and sisters this is philippians 3 13 brothers and sisters i do not regard myself as having taken hold of it yet but one thing i do forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead i push forward i picked it up as an introduction to sanctification because a vast number of Christians prefer to stop at justification. Well, I accepted Lord Jesus as my savior. And the moment I accepted him, I was justified. God sees me as righteous, totally righteous in Christ. And it has given me total and full access to God why should i bother about anything after that have you heard of anyone who was appointed an officer at a very high position in any kind of office and he says well i am appointed an officer i'll just come sit on my chair every day and i leave every evening nobody does that and if anybody dares to do, do that on a responsible position he would very soon be removed because when a position is given a responsibility is given and that responsibility has to be fulfilled 
the problem is we talk about position we talk about the privileges of the position but often we forget the responsibilities that come with the position a lot of people would like to stop at justification because position is very pleasing responsibility is hard work that responsibility part we study in sanctification and as we study i will also mention experiential justification and ultimate ju justification i did not pick them up separately because justification and sancti sanctification are deeply linked with each other and some of the stages are intermingled with each other and therefore so far i have mentioned only positional justification in christ we are justified the righteousness of christ covers us and god looks at us as righteous and therefore we have total and full access directly to god no intermediary is needed but as we walk our christian life justification has to be shown in our everyday life day to day life and that is mentioned very clearly in the epistle of james epistle of james is very important for christian life and christians should make it a point to read it frequently and christian should make it a point to teach many of those living verses to their children verses related to one showing our justification to others through our behavior and controlling our tongue because justified people those who are in the image of christ they should not be loose tongued people these are things to be taught to children at a very early stage and those things are related not only to progressive justification they are also related to sanctification let's begin with some definitions some data and some key verses the word sanctification is used in greek and also in hebrew and there are a minimum of 66 references to sanctification in old plus new i am talking about direct references there are 66 a minimum of 66 direct references are there and indirect references there are many it is such an important subject and the key verse which we are going to use in this study is second timothy 2 verses 20 and 21 Second Timothy two verses twenty and twenty one. Most of the quotations which I am giving you, they come from King James Bible. King James Bible is also known as Authorized Bible or Authorized Version. Even today, in many churches, if you have to release a book. you need authorization from the hierarchy of the church king james bible is known as authorized ver ver uh, version because it was authorized by the king of england please remember this is an abomination nobody no human has the authority to authorize if you pick up a roman catholic book then as you look at the author's name on the next page you will find a word imprimatur other words are also there all these words show that the roman catholic writer who published this book published this book by permission of the church please remember churches kings priests bishops they have no right to authorize and permit and license a person to publish a book or any book but god the holy spirit knew that in new testament era 
such a rigid control will come and dictators will rise and they will control all aspects of our Christian life. This King James Version was published with the permission of King James. That's why it is also known as authorized version. Most of the quotations come from authorized version because in English, this is the most common and most widely available translation. But please remember this translation was done approximately 550 years ago. And in 550 years ago, English language has undergone a lot of change. And therefore, uh, in many places, it has developed imperfections. That's why I keep on quoting from other translations also. And from time to time, I give my own translation from original languages so as to render the meaning clear. Most quotations which I'm uh, quoting here are from King James Bible. This one, 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21 says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and of earth, mud, and some to honor and some to dishonor. We ourselves know that not all utensils in a house are used for one and the same purpose. Particularly those from Kerala who are attending this, they know that now it is gone, but during times of our grandparents, in Kerala houses, there used to be a special vessel known as a spittoon, Kolambi. It was an essential vessel, uh, vessel during those times, but it was not a vessel of honor. I would not even touch. In Hindi, it is known as Ugaldan. Jisme hamare dade pardade log thukte the. My grandpa had a wonderful spittoon made of what is known as Ashtadhatu, beautiful design. But as a child, I always hesitated to go near it. The scripture says that in a house, there are vessels of gold, silver, also wood and also mud. Some are for honor, some for dishonor. But there is one difference. The spittoon does not decide that it will be a spittoon. It is the maker who designs it into a spittoon. It is another maker who designs something into a jug or a jar or a flower vase or a plate or a saucer. And therefore, when the verse says that in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor the similarity with us stops there it is comparing this verse is comparing our role inside the church honor dishonor but the similarity stops there because it is not those vessels that choose their role but rather the maker of the vessel who chooses their role. But in the Christian church, there is a difference. We find that difference in the next phrase. If a man therefore purge himself from these, that means the evils, he shall be a vessel unto honor. So in the Christian church, though we are different, like gold, vessels of gold and silver, wood and, and earth. We are all vessels for God's use. All vessels are for use. You may say some are for show. Yes, that's also a use. So just as vessels are there in a household for multiple uses, people within Christendom, they have multiple roles to play with one difference 
as far as vessels are concerned it is god who decides but as far as christian believers are concerned it is we who decide what kind of a vessel we shall be are we going to be a vessel of mud which is of no value used and thrown or are we going to be a vessel made of gold and silver which are polished and usually kept in safe custody that difference should be very clear to you we will come back repeatedly to to that uh, usage let's go let us proceed in that verse if if a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be vessel unto honor sanctified and meet this word meet is no longer used in english the correct translation would be suitable for the master's use and prepared unto every good work which means that if we purge ourselves or ourselves from those things which are not appropriate or suitable for a child of god then by choosing to be away from those things which are not suitable or useful for a believer we are sanctifying ourselves that is a very good example of sanctification and based on that sanctification that that example of sanctification we can quickly say wow sanctification means separating ourselves from those things which are not appropriate for a child of god so that by separating ourselves from those things we become sanctified the separated ones that's the meaning of sanctified sanctified means the separated ones and sanctification also has uh, multiple levels just as justification is positional experiential ultimate in the same way sanctification is also positional experiential ultimate we need to remember that a large number of spiritual truths in the christian life they are threefold a position is given to us and then in our everyday life we have to experience it and finally there will be an ultimate as far as ultimate justification is concerned and ultimate sanctification is concerned i urge all of you to review that series presented in brethren theological institute by dr senish churian about the judgment seat of christ many many of us in fact most of us have been brought up under the impression that once saved always saved and there shall be no judgment that is completely false let me remind you that is completely false christians have judgment in their everyday life and christians during the period of tribulation will also face an ultimate judgment where all impurities impurities kala uh, kara chuluka all spots and blemishes will be removed and then we shall be may we shall be made to stand as the bride of christ that ultimate judgment and ultimate purification will also lead us to ultimate righteousness and ultimate sanctification so these threefold truths should always be kept in mind we have been justified and the moment we were justified we were separated unto god and therefore we were also sanctified sanctified means separated 
but positional justification has to be shown in experiential life in the same way positional sanctification has to be demonstrated in everyday life and that is the reason why the scripture says if any man purges himself purging is a word far stronger than cleaning please remember many of you who have a medical background you know what a purgative means it's a very strong medicine and everything that is inside the patient goes out multiple times so the bible translators use that word here because the original is a very strong word not just a little bit of cleaning and polishing no 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 purging means everything that is improper for a believer has to be removed from him but before he removes it has to be identified but before he identifies he should know and he can know only if he devotes in himself day and night to study and devotion so my dear brothers and sisters as we pick up the subject of sanctification let me remind you that the moment we were justified we were also set apart for god that was positional sanctification but where we need to focus because those are acts of god and we focus upon them only to understand the act the acts of god we we play no role in our positional justification and positional sanctification but we play everything in our experiential justification and experiential sanctification they are interlinked and for that the scripture is very clear we have to do it of course uh, any verse of the bible should be understood in relation to related verses this verse which says if a man therefore if a man purges himself that should be understood in the light of romans chapter 7 romans chapter 7 the last verses make it very clear very very clear that we as long as we live in this earthly body the human sin nature constantly keeps on pressing us to lead an unholy life to do things we don't want to do to do things which we abhor which we hate when we pick up that verse with this verse therefore if a man purges himself it becomes clear that though it is our responsibility to purge ourselves it is not an easy task absolutely not an easy task unfortunately a lot of people don't understand this they think that if i fast at least once a day and maybe three times a month I will be purged. No, that is not the way of purging. The biblical purging starts when we are cleansed with the divine water. And the divine water is the scripture. When the waters of the scripture fall upon us and when those waters wash us, we are purged. But a lot of things take place. Let me remind you, uh, when the Bible, when the scripture speaks of a subject, we should always uh, pay attention to related truths. The scripture very clearly says that the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the dividing ascender, of the soul and spirit the joints and the marrow why because 
as we read the scripture as we study the scripture as we focus ourselves upon the scripture the scripture starts speaking to us that is the sword of the spirit which is dividing and showing son this thing in your life is not proper separate it abandon it so when the scripture says that we have to purge ourselves the first thing we have to remember is that there is nothing like automatic purging there is nothing like easy purging we have to remember that the biggest enemy of purging from dishonorable things is our own human sin nature a few moments about human sin nature let me remind you that uh, when adam and eve disobeyed god they became sinners and they developed their nature which is known as sin nature and as each and every baby is conceived that sin nature is transmitted or passed on to that that baby that is the reason why the scripture says in sin i was conceived it doesn't mean that the process of conception is sin rather that when we say in honey this almond is roasted i'm sure that many of you have seen almonds which are roasted in honey so when we say in honey the almond was roasted it means that honey became a part of the almond during the process of roasting in the same way in sin i was conceived when the scripture says it means that sin nature became a pass, part of our conception and then our birth this sin nature will be with us till as long as we live in this mortal bodies very soon when the lord comes or when we have our resurrection then we will get transformed bodies please remember there is a big misunderstanding among us that we will be resurrected in glorified bodies no the scripture very clearly states that transformation has two stages the first is we when we are uh, when we are resurrected we get transformed bodies which are no longer subject to death once the transformed body is passed through fire first corinthians chapter 3 hebrews chapter 6 once it is passed through fire and once it is purified from wood hay and stubble thorns thistles when it is purified and when all traces of wood hay and stubble and also thorns and thistles are removed then we become glorified so please remember it's a very false idea that we are resurrected in a glorified body and somehow that ignorance had, has continued generation after generation because we don't want to look at the truth but please remember first we are res resurrected first in transformed bodies and then it becomes glorified body so the old sin nature will be us as long as we are in this mortal body the moment we leave the mortal body and become transformed the old sin nature is gone first thing second thing because of the old sin nature all our life it will be with us it we have to struggle one more thing before i go further as i said this is a bible school training so all the related definitions will be mentioned as we proceed the new testament uses the word sin in two ways one singular the other plural whenever the new testament uses the word sin in singular it is talking about our sin nature and whenever the new testament uses the word sin in plural sins it is talking about our actions that difference should be very clear in our minds 
in new testament the word sin in singular refers to the sin nature with which we are born and the word sin in plural means the acts of sin which we commit in our day to day life so a person has to purge himself from sins not from sin we cannot purge ourselves from sin sin is given to us as a nature why did god give it that has not been revealed to mankind at present we just know that we are born with a sin nature we are conceived with a sin nature we are born with a sin nature and throughout our life the sin nature keeps on bothering us to fall into sin we cannot purge ourselves from the sin nature purging is done by god at the moment of our resurrection when we get our transformed bodies there will be no sin nature in the transformed body and therefore when the scripture says if a man therefore purges himself it is not purging from sin nature it is talking about purging from sinful activities but since the sin nature is constantly present inside us purging ourselves from sinful activities is not easy not at all easy and please remember once we accept lord jesus as our savior we are only infants in christ and then infant needs to grow much before he is able to eliminate all the dirt in his life we know that infants they defecate wherever they lie they urinate wherever they lie but as the infant grows he or she starts to recognize to isolate those things from bed and other places in the same way in our spiritual life the process of purging grows as we grow in our christian life which means that if we really want if we really have a desire to purge ourselves then we should also have a desire to grow as we grow we get a mature mind using which we can understand what is improper and what is proper let me give you a very simple example is it proper for a believer to smoke young people often ask this question it's a very common question and a lot of people give a lot of stupid answers i once mentioned a, an uncle of mine he said you little guy if the lord wanted you to smoke then he would have put a chimney on your head for the smoke to go out stupid answers it's because they have not grown in their christian life and therefore they cannot give a decent or a mature answer finally i asked my uncle marvin and he said listen uh, let's read first corinthians 10 13 which says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it for the glory of god and then he said my dear young nephew if you think that smoking glorifies god then you smoke if you think that it doesn't glorify god then don't smoke why should i give you a yes or no answer the scripture gives you enough guideline that is a mature answer i made these two i mentioned these two examples because both of these extremes are there within christendom some of us simply cannot think straight some of us simply cannot thinking in a mature manner and therefore we bring up the most stupid answer and we think oh wow that's an answer worth a nobel prize and young people who listen to those answers they laugh in their mind okay this old man has lost his uh, balance please remember purging ourselves 
from what is improper needs the correct way of thinking correct way of thinking requires a mature mind a mature mind means that the mind of christ has to be formed in us and if the mind of christ has to be formed in us then the word of god the the word of christ should dwell in our heart if the word of christ has to dwell in our heart we have to focus on the word of god so sanctification is not an instantaneous process nobody can lay their hands upon your head and say my child i blessed you and now you are fully and thoroughly sanctified it doesn't happen that way positional sanctification happens by the work of the holy spirit and we have no role in that and no human has a role in that but after that everything has to take place through our own efforts now when i say our own efforts there is one thing which i have not mentioned so far and that is the role of the holy spirit and we will come to that but first let me tell you our role we need to grow in our christian life and as i said if we have to grow that is possible only if we day and night if we focus on the word of god you may say i am a very busy man i have an 18 hour job how can i focus on the word of god come on whom are you kidding anything on which we want to focus our mind we can focus our mind even if you have an 18 hour job or 20 hour job we can dwell upon the scripture anywhere in any situation as we dwell upon the scripture the sword of the spirit pierces into our heart it tells us what is right and wrong the mind of christ is formed in us i am not uh, giving a chronological description please remember also according to romans chapter 12 the first two verses which every believer must memorize and must make his or her children memorize it very clearly says that our minds have to be transformed our minds are going to be transformed not by listening to this man or that man mind transformation requires that something which can go deep into our heart and pierce between our flesh and spirit or joints and marrows that is a, that that's a scripture so my dear brothers and sisters today i dwelt upon length upon, uh, upon uh, dwelt upon one phrase for quite some length because there is a lot of misunderstanding among us many people think that if they speak in tongues they are sanctified come on speaking in tongues has was a spiritual gift and all of us have spiritual gifts that's not the medium or avenue of sanctification others think if they fast thrice a day or thrice a week or thrice a month they are sanctified no biblical things in our life that means what bible commands in our life has to be done in ways which bible tells us so if we want to if you are serious about purging ourselves then in closing let me tell you let us once again become people of the book that was title given to brother and people people of the book by others let us become people of the book let us give full attention to the scripture let us give priority to it let the scripture transform our mind through all the things that i mentioned and then we will have enough maturity to understand what is what and then with the help of the holy spirit Dear friends, I am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He would love to get your questions. Please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you. Please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing.
Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.